Now, the next thinking skill we're exploring is futures thinking. Now, a lot of students and a lot of people have difficulty envisaging the future. They often feel that the future happens to them, that they have relatively little control about what occurs into the future, and they, they simply have to cope with whatever comes along. Futures thinking is about students recognizing that they can influence what occurs in the future. And by understanding what might be possible into the future, they can make choices around which future they would like to see occur. And part of that then comes into the design process whereby students create solutions that change the future, make a solution to a problem that can be utilized to have their preferred future come about. Even if it's something simple like making some money or being successful in a business, but it can be much broader through to changing the world for the better, solving some of the large intractable problems that we face in the world. Now, of course, for our young students, those large intractable problems may be somewhat more challenging than they're able to achieve. Um, a lot of adults are trying to solve them and are having difficulties, but they can always be recontextualized into something that is of interest and of contextual understanding for students. So let's say food scarcity in the world is a problem. But so might be the problem of students having their um, lunch and taking to school in their bag and their fruit being squished and becoming unpalatable because their bag gets knocked around on the bus and their fruit becomes bruised and damaged as a result. And so coming up with a solution to that, making a lunchbox that keeps their fruit safe and things of that nature as a solution to that problem fits within the context of food scarcity in terms of a global problem being solved but within the context and understanding that children can explore so some of the aspects we look at around futures thinking are to do with trends so in order to understand a trend we first have to understand that things change and that things change generally over time. We can see that in the weather. It might be sunny, and then it might become cloudy, then it might become rainy. There is a trend happening there that we can see in the changes over time. We can see those same trends happening in seasons, where it becomes colder in winter, then it becomes warmer again in summer. So these are things that students can explore. We can explore the weather by making weather maps and taking observations and, uh, and graphing those. We can graph temperatures and see how temperatures change over time. We can graph frequency of rain and when which months have the most rain. These are things that we can explore as changes over time and trends that students can then graph and try to understand and explain. Now, one of the reasons why we do this is so that we can make forecasts. If we can see that the temperature is getting colder and colder, then we can make a forecast that it's probably going to continue to get colder. And if we graph that, we can then either make some measurements and make predictions then on what the temperature will go down to. Of course, temperature is an example of a cyclical or seasonal trend. So eventually it does start going back up again and it oscillates, it goes up and down. Other trends, though, may be different. Um, so, for example, if the number of electric cars being sold, that is currently trending up. So over time, we could graph that and we could probably make a prediction that eventually all cars will be electric cars by looking at the trend lines and how that's increasing. So that allows us now to see a prediction on the future, a future whereby electric cars will replace petrol cars by looking at those trends. We can see the trends of electric cars going up and the trend of petrol cars going down. And so by projecting those into the future, we could make a reasonable prediction that at some point, which we could possibly even predict um, by looking at the trend lines, we can say that there will be no more petrol cars and everyone will be using electric cars. So that can be applied to lots of different things and lots of problems that students might be trying to solve or especially exploring before they come up with a solution to the solving. So one might be looking at the amount of garbage in the schoolyard. We could do some measurements and look at how often 
and how much garbage there is. And we might be able to see that there's a trend of the amount of garbage going down. Uh, more bins are being put out. More teachers are doing playground duty. And we're seeing a trend in the amount of garbage and litter in the, in the school yard. So we could project that and say, OK, if this continues, there will become a point whereby there'll be no more litter in the schoolyard. That may not happen. There may be other factors, but that could be something that could be explored. And students might say in the reverse, if there was a trend of things going up, let's say bullying occurring. And they could then come up with a, a, um, a trend and look at, OK, um, last month there were five instances of bullying. This month there were eight. Next month, we predict there'll probably be 10 and they could see if that then occurs. And then they might be looking at how to solve that problem. Um, maybe putting a bullying intervention program in and they might design a little computer game to teach students about the problems of bullying in order to address that problem that they've identified by looking at the trends and looking at futures thinking. Of course, they want to see a preferred future where there is no bullying. So their solution is being aimed at trying to achieve that but first they needed to understand what is possibly happening by futures thinking. So forecasting is a way of making those predictions. And one of the ways we can do that is using what's called a futures wheel, where we start with where we are at the moment, and then we look at all the things that might happen. And we put those in the first sort of level around the central idea. And then if those things happen, other things might then happen. And so we form another layer um, around of things that would occur as second order events. And then we might have third order events. And by looking at that, we can see then different trajectories into the future. If certain events happen, other events will happen and other events will happen. And we can get a better understanding of what possible futures might occur by building this futures wheel. Um, so it's just one of the techniques that can be used. Another important technique that students need to explore is the idea of backcasting. If we identify what the future is we want to see achieved, let's say a school with no bullying, backcasting is then a technique used to try to work out how that might be achieved. Forecasting and trends don't necessarily tell us how to solve a problem. They'll tell us a problem exists and how that problem might be increasing or decreasing and so forth but they don't give us a clear picture of how to solve the problem. Backcasting allows us to look at where the future could be, and then we think about, okay, what are the things that have to be put into place over time for that future to come about? And then we can consider in our problem solving, addressing those different issues, those different points, so that they do come about, which will then hopefully lead to the preferred future that we would like to see. Now, the final skill that students should develop in futures thinking is around scenario writing. This is looking at their preferred future or looking at a future. Sometimes we don't actually look at just the preferred future. Often we'll look at the, the worst possible future if things keep happening in terms of our trends. Let's say if bullying continued to increase and there was so much bullying, what would happen in the school if just bullying got completely out of control? That would be a worst case future. Then we could look at the best case future where there was no bullying at all and everyone got on and that would be the ideal. But then there is often what's called a more realistic, um, most likely future. So it's not necessarily the best case, but it's what would be acceptable and most likely to be achievable. So in this case, we would then say, OK, yes, there'll probably be some bullying, but we need programs in place to then address that bullying so it doesn't become problematic. Now, of course, um, moonshot thinking would be trying to achieve zero bullying, or maybe even going beyond zero bullying, where everyone actually helps each other and supports one another. So it goes beyond even the concept of just removing bullying into a future whereby everyone is actively um, doing the opposite of bullying. So these are things that can be explored as part of futures thinking. Now, they all contribute towards the processes we have around problem solving. Both entrepreneurial thinking supports some of the conceptual elements of problem solving and the processes involved in project management and um, coming up with the, the solutions. Futures thinking really helps define the solution to the problem that we want to achieve. And through backcasting can provide a mechanism 
for helping come up with the design process of how to achieve that future, how to achieve that solution. But collectively, they provide a, a range of mechanisms to allow us to explore the future and have a feeling of control and capability to actually make changes to that future. And that's probably the most important aspect of futures thinking that we want to instill in students. Now, I've given you a couple of activities to use with ChatGTP, um, looking at coming up with preferred futures using the global um, millennial goals, and then coming up with a preferred future for um, something that you would like to see achieved in terms of a scenario around um, a preferred future that you would wish to have developed. But with that, I want you to see if you can generate the steps needed to get there. Essentially, what you'll be doing is backcasting. So you define the future you want to see happen, what would be this ideal future, and then see if you can come up with the steps that would be able to get there. And again, you can use ChatGTP to assist you in that process. And then finally, looking at scenarios and thinking about what would a future be like if um, certain things happen. And I want you to try to use the concept of futures wheels, where we look at a whole range of different things and then um, have first order effects off those, what would happen if some of those things happened, and then second order effects and then third order effects. And again, using ChatGTP to assist you in coming up with that um, comprehensive exploration of the future around a particular topic. Now, the example I've given is around um, uh, a, the idea of maternal health. And if we achieved really great maternal health, what would occur in the world? Now, one obvious thing might be we'll have a greater population. There'll be more babies born. What impact might that have? But there could be a whole range of other different things that could occur in looking at a future where uh, maternal health was greatly improved. But you can explore the other millennial goals and see what you can come up with in terms of different futures as a result of those goals being achieved.